Remember months ago on Sportsnet 650 where the sentiment going around was, hey, why not go out there and instead of saying a fire Jim Benning, why not go out there with a thank you Jim? You know what? I'm not going to say thank you Jim here today in this video. Instead, I'm going to say something else. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Not Batman, but Bruce Boudreaux. The Vancouver Canucks have just wrapped up their very first game away from the Benning era. We are exempt from Green, Benning, Weisbrod, Baumgartner, everybody that had been on this team for the past little while who has kind of been involved in this entire mess the Canucks find themselves in. Gone. First game for Bruce Boudreaux stepping into the reins as the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, and he says all the right things in the morning. Heck, you know what? Everybody said the right things in the morning, with Aquilini and Stan Smeal making their press conference a little bit before Bruce Boudreaux came out over here. You had yourself so much press for the team that was, oddly enough, really exciting. The sentiment around everybody's words was pretty much the same, that yes, this team was not in a position to continue doing what they were doing, and we could not sit back and let things happen the way they did. Boudreaux came in here, positive vibes, positive energy, he swears, he drops an F-bomb as he leaves the interview, and he's super articulate, super detailed with his answers. He talks about how he tells Brock Besser to shoot more, how he wants to go out there and change things up. Power play, penalty kill, it's all in the palm of his hand. And the first game, baby, Bruce Boudreaux, the Vancouver Canucks get a standing ovation from the crowd. Last time it was a jersey thrown, booze raining supreme and fire betting echoing in the chambers of Rogers Arena. But today it was a standing ovation. The Vancouver Canucks win 4 nothing. Thatcher Demko's first shutout on the season, and the Vancouver Canucks are 1-0-0 in the Bruce Boudreaux post-Benning era. My goodness, dude, you know, I said it in all the videos we made earlier in the previous few, like, hours, spanning back to yesterday. One guy is not gonna change everything. One guy is not gonna get this team to start winning games like crazy. One guy is not gonna revitalize the season. Was I wrong? I think I was wrong. Oh my goodness, it's an overreaction, I get it, it's one game, you don't want to go out there and make conclusions on a season off of one game, but my goodness... This game really could not have gone any better. For what we expected and what the Vancouver Canucks fans have had to suffer through the past eight years, and just having all of those emotions kind of headed around, cuddled with, and then just kicked out the door in the form of Bruce Boudreaux and his absolutely positive vibe, we all just came in there thinking, okay, it's really too good to be true. All this stuff that Boudreaux is talking about, there's no way there's going to be any follow-through, right? Like, I'm excited, I think it'll be fine, but... Dude, what a win. What a statement. I don't even want to think about how it must feel to be Jim Benning or Travis Green right now, sitting at home and watching this game go down and be like, Huh, where the heck was that two days ago? This is a completely different team. The Vancouver Canucks went out there in a system that Bruce Boudreaux plays as aggressive, where the top guys get time, where the top guys go out there in all situations, and where back checkers are skating hard, four checkers are skating hard into the boards, puck battles, etc. This Vancouver team played probably the best game they have all season. Like, it might be the new coach impressions, you know, the reinvigoration of energy. Okay, we got a brand new start, a brand new identity here. Let's go out there and write a new one. Or it might be the coach. It's a little bit of both in my opinion, but the Vancouver Canucks played extraordinarily well. Now in the first period, they didn't really get anything going because this one actually started out really slowly. It was like seven minutes in. I think there were only like three total shots in the game. It was really passive for both sides. You could see the Vancouver Canucks really kind of feeling things out. There was indeed the video tribute that the team played out for Alex Edler, who was playing on the Kings. Number two on the Kings, he's got himself his first goal on the season a few days ago against Jacob Marks from 100 total goals in his career, and he's actually outproduced his 2021 Vancouver season in just the limited sample size he's had in LA this season, so yeah, good for Edler. 
But the first period was scoreless. Both Cal Peterson and Thatcher Demko making some pretty solid saves. You had yourselves what is a pretty good goaltending matchup for the most part in the first frame. But aside from that, the first period was filled with a lot of Vancouver zone time, a lot of chances where they were trying to throw things to the net, and where you could sort of see the aggression and the difference in the way this team was performing. Normally under Travis Green, we would run that 1-4 system where there would be one four checker in deep and there would be four guys that are just kind of teetering on the outside, but no, Bruce Boudreaux had everybody forechecking hard and getting involved. This came out in the second period where we actually had ourselves a Mikey anderson Bo Horvat trip which sent the Vancouver Canucks to the power play. Guess what? Boudreaux talked about earlier this evening that he wants Brock Besser to shoot more. And guess what happens here? It's a play behind the net. Miller goes over to Pearson, who finds Besser in the slot, and he grips it and rips it. It's a bad shot. It's a wide shot. It's a knuckler. But it bounces off a Drew Doughty skate and in. Brock Besser gets his first goal in 13 games. In the game where Bruce Boudreaux comes in and he's like, yeah, I told Brock to shoot more, and he did that. Fifth on the season for Brock, assisted by Pearson and Miller. Let's go. Give it two more minutes, and the Vancouver Canucks start things out with a different line. It's Petey taking the puck in on the left side. He sends a pass in front for Vasily Pod Colson, who is going to the net. He misses, but eventually the puck bounces down behind the net to Connor Garland, who is able to just casually sweep the puck in as Cal Peterson is completely out of the net trying to stop that Pod Colson attempt. This was a fantastic sequence. You could see the agility and the aggression by these three guys over here. Connor Garland was behind the net for checking hard, Pod Colson driving the net hard to get that one-timer opportunity, and of course, Pedersen being the guy to force it towards the goal in the first place. This is kind of what we had been expecting out of a Bruce Boudreaux system. Aggressive play, tenacious play, hard to play against play, and you know what? Even defensively, you could see that the Vancouver Canucks were going out there and doing the same thing. It was a Victor Arvidsson chance a few minutes later where he absolutely dangled the pants out of all the Canucks players and was just barely stopped by a sprawled-out Thatcher Demko pad where we started to see, okay, now the Canucks are back-checking. They've got a lot of guys that are in deep, in their own zone, trying to dig pucks out and trying to break things out the other way. Bruce Boudreaux said it, man. Like, why be only good offensively when you can also be good defensively at the same time? Period was also filled with something that the Canucks haven't seen too much of this season. Killed off penalties. Travis Hamnick and Tanner Pearson both go to the box. And this one... You saw yourselves an aggressive Vancouver PK with different personnel. This one was strange because you're seeing guys like Elias Pettersson and Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat going out there in a penalty-killing role. When was the last time we had seen this? It gets so great that Elias Pettersson actually almost gets a semi-breakaway on the shorthanded unit. He draws a penalty shot from Philippe Deneau, and Pettersson comes in on the penalty shot. He misses the net. It was a very, very unfortunate bounce. You know, that would have been the icing on the cake for the period had Pettersson just gotten himself a shorthanded penalty shot goal. But alas, we're due for another time, I guess. Give it seven minutes into the third period, and the LA Kings, it's Rasmus Kupari, I believe, who has it in his own corner. Alex Chason goes in deep, tries to force the forecheck, and Kupari makes a little bit of a mistake because he centers it out right in front for one Yuho Lamiko, who just takes it, he holds it, he fakes one shot, takes another, and then he just beats Cal Peterson on the far side, which is good for him because he actually had a very good opportunity earlier in the game that was ringing off the post afterwards, so good for Lamico to get his first goal as a Vancouver Canuck unassisted, of course, because it was from the stick of the LA King guy. And then on the power play, JT Miller from Besser and Horvat. What an absolute rocket laser cannon of a shot from Miller. A bomb of a one-timer. He just shoots it as hard as he can. As the Vancouver Canucks second power play unit, is it second? I don't know if it's the second. Ah, uh, second, first, who cares? Miller grips it, Miller rips it, and he does what everybody has been expecting out of Elias Pettersson in this game, except it's not Elias Pettersson, it's Miller instead. He gets his ninth on the season, Thatcher Demko gets a shutout. I wanted to talk one more time about Elias Pettersson before we end off today's video about the Canucks game, because while Petey was a lot more dynamic, I would say he looked faster and I'd say he looked hungrier in this game compared to, like, a few games ago, 
This guy still just straight up refused to shoot. He refused some very obvious, very clear one-time opportunities. And the Miller thing was an example of what it's like when Elias Pettersson would probably be just completely in the zone. I get it, some of the passes that Petey received from Quinn Hughes on the 1T side weren't perfect. He had to take him off the skate, he had to do this, he had to hold onto it for a little bit to settle it down, but still, aside from the penalty shot, Pedersen didn't really force his luck in trying a goal. Like, aside from one opportunity in this game, the guy had so many chances to grip it and rip it and one-time it, but he just refused to do that, instead sending passes through the shin pads of LA players on the power play on the far side to Connor Garland, where it would get cycled back to Hughes, and he'd go to Petey again, and Petey wouldn't shoot it again, and it would be like, yeah, okay, come on, shoot it. Like, Brock was starting to shoot more, you could see that very clear tendency in his game. Petey, man. Bruce Boudreaux's got to have a conversation with him next, and Bruce Boudreaux, to his credit, he did say that it'll probably take about 10 or 12 days or whatever it was to really get the team up to where he feels like they need to be, but uh, yeah, one day down, I already really like what we see. So, the Vancouver Canucks, thank you, Jim, or excuse me, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Talk to me in the comments, what do you think about tonight's game? The Vancouver Canucks under their new coach, Bruce Boudreaux. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.